Get ready for Hosts at Home. On today's show, he got kids messy on brain surge. He got kids slimy on figure it out. Am I seeing a trend here? If you're from Mayfield, New York, or anywhere in the country, there's 101 ways to love Jeff Sutphin. And now, here's your host who interviews the host, Adam Wurzel. Hi, everybody. I'm Adam Wurzel. Welcome to Hosts at Home, the show where we chat with your favorite host, past and present. By the way, thank you, Richard Malmus, for that fantastic introduction about this man. You know, I just want to say before we start, this is our first ever host at home in person. We are actually in this man's home. We never wanted Hosts at Home to be a pandemic show. This was always the plan. And this man just happens to be the first person to invite us into his home. And he is also a fantastic friend of mine. Jeff Sotfin is here. Nice to see you. Adam was a great, uh, great introduction. Thank you. And ap- apologies to the viewers if you know Adam is scraping the bottom of the barrel here. <laughs> He's running out of hosts, and we are just this is this is what you're getting today. So my apologies. Uh, I, I want to be honest with everybody. I wanted to, and I told you this since we started in season one. I don't want to interview you on Zoom. I don't. I want to come here because you have so many cool props. We're going to talk about all of this stuff that's behind us. Look at this. Look at this. We have so much Jeff Sutphin. Would you call this memorabilia? Uh, it's just stuff I stole, if I'm being, if I'm being completely honest with you. Uh, before we talk about all that, we always start on Host at Home by saying, where is home for you? Where are we? What are you, a cop? <laughs> uh, well, home is wherever I am with my family, Adam. But geographically speaking, uh, I live in the suburbs outside of LA. Good answer. Would you, <laughs> would, would you, would you want more? I want to talk about some of the stuff that we have behind us. But before you do, this is the part of the show where you tell me how good I look and I haven't aged a bit. Because you do that on all your shows. Well, I I do that with Nickelodeon. That's not me fishing for a compliment. But it is true because I do this with all these Nickelodeon hosts. Fillmore looks like he just stepped off the set. Yep. Kirk Fogg looks like he just stepped off the set. Mark looks fantastic. Mm -hmm. He's turning 70. I know. You just turned 30. (laughs) <laughs> exactly. I think I think where you're going with this, you want to know my skin re- regimen, right? I do. I do. Is yeah, it see? a vino? Is it? Do you have? So I go with Neutrogena. <laughs> it's uh, it's a triple protection. It's face lotion. It's sunscreen, and it's razor relief. Why mess with three creams when you can get all in one? This, by the way, is not sponsored. Uh, I want to just talk to you real quick about how you got your start and, 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 and getting to Nickelodeon before we get into all this. Yeah, yeah. I, honestly, um, I went to college for TV, radio, film. I knew I wanted to work in TV. I came out of school, worked my way up as a PA. I thought I was going to be an editor. Actually, I loved editing. And uh, as I started kind of working my way through and navigating that scene, I realized like, oh no, I want to be a producer. That's where I see a lot more, you know, of the idea generating and stuff like that. So that was kind of the track. I, I went all over the map. I spent some time in VH1 on air graphics. I worked in VH1 development. Uh, and then I just kind of ended up at some other places, came back and I got hired at Nickelodeon as a segment producer on Pick Live when they were launching. and. And then just through a series of happy accidents, I ended up on camera. It was one of those things they were like, hey, we're thinking of doing this uh, superhero. Do you want to do that? I was like, I'm super comfortable in a full body leotard and every guy growing up wants to be a superhero. So let's, you know, let's go, let's take it out. So we did. And Pick Boy, like I said, Pick Boy was just one of those things that it it really connected and grabbed hold. And like, I'm going to be honest, like, I don't ever think it was one of these things that oh man, you're so great. You're such a great person and a great kid. Pick Boy was the guy who picked kids to win prizes. Every kid wants to win a prize, so of course I'm going to be popular because I was their route to getting something off the prize wall. So, you know, I, yeah, I have fun doing it. I love doing Pick Boy, but it was, I was always very aware that people were, you know, the kids were trying to show me the love because they wanted to go to the prize wall. And, and that this is, by the way, going to be a roadmap to all of these props and signs. So let's start here. I've never interviewed a president before. Well, I didn't but, actually uh, make it to, oh, uh, yeah, I did. This was, uh, this was a prop that was made, a pick boy for president poster. This was made for uh, a promo that we shot in 2004. It was, the, I think, the return of season two. Yupik Live was never supposed to be more than a 10 week experiment. That's what it was like. When we were hired, it was like, it's, it's literally just gonna be a 10 week experiment. And we're like, okay. And then it went on to, for over 400 episodes. But this was a, the prop poster that was made for that promo, Pick Boy for President 2004. This is, uh, 
This my wife had made for me for our first anniversary. Um, Who needs Superman or Wonder Woman right. when you can have Pick Boy? These are just a few of the guys I've worked with. This is my crew, you know. I'll say I'm rolling about seven or eight deep. Um, no, so this was uh, an artist at Nickelodeon. Stacy had uh, hired this artist uh, to create. This was a, our year one anniversary gift because the first year anniversary is paper. And she's like, oh, what am I going to do? And she had this, this made for me. So that's super cool, right? Super cool, super super, gross. super awesome, super awesome. And wasn't Pick Boy part of like what was the Pickles? It was like a uh, band. Yeah, yeah. So for you Pick Live, we there was this. Um, whenever Pick Boy would come out to do the prize wall, I would always have a little exchange with Brent. You know, I would always, I would jump out and be like, Hey, guess what I did today, or whatever. And one day I said like, Hey, I want to just jump out and go. Guess what, guys? I'm getting the band back together. And they're like, Oh wait, that's a that's a funny line, but like we could make that into more. So like, don't say it. So that little suggestion sparked this whole thing. So we started making, uh, coming up with all these ideas about this fake band that we all used to be in called The Pickles. And we would just sit around a table and joke about it. And then we just started writing down like all these beats. And it was, we used to have celebrities on You Pick Live all the time. And so then we would, uh, in between commercial breaks, we would usually drop a green screen and put them on screen and go through what I call the shameless plugs. Hey, I'm so-and-so and you're watching Nickelodeon. Hey, I'm so-and-so. Happy 10th birthday, Nick Magazine. Hey, I'm so-and-so. Don't forget to watch a brand new episode of SpongeBob. We, you know, we always had a list of network asks and they would use say them. So we started doing, we got through all the network asks and I think it was um, Brendan Fraser was our guest. And it was really strange. So I was just like, I, Jonathan Judge, who was the producer of You Pick Life, I was like, hey, we got some time left over. Should we get like him talking about the band, The Pickles? He's like, yeah, yeah, So I just went in and I was like, hey, so we got this fake band. And these celebrities just started talking about this band that they're like, oh, they were my favorite band. I used to listen to them all the time when I was in my college dorm room. We weren't feeding them lines. They would talk about this fake band. And so we started just collecting all of this footage. And we weren't telling anybody. And we were creating this whole thing and we would um, sometimes like on our shoots, if we had some time left over, I'd be like, oh, hey, let's go get this. And we would shoot, we were just making all these little things that we had put together. So we got to a point where we had amassed like a bunch of footage and we're like, there's actually something we could, if we really committed to this, we could put something together. So one of our writers just kind of wrote this whole outline and then started writing a script and then we okay well we'll fill in all these beats and so we had asked the company we said hey we got this idea we want to do this thing and they're like no, no, no. we don't want to spend money on that like you guys no don't do that and we're like oh okay so we kept doing it uh and we kept shooting it and we kept collecting stuff and i would go in my edit uh because I, I would edit all our rolling packages for you pick and same thing my editor had a a pickles bin and anytime we finished our edits early I'd go open the pickles they'd open that sequence and we'd start editing and we were just building this thing and the network never knew network never knew and so every Monday they would have these uh, meetings called the Monday morning meetings where everybody in the uh, company got together in the boardroom and every department head would go around and go, hey, here's what we did last week here's what we got coming up coming up this week and they would show maybe like a little highlight reel of like something and so it was coming around to the U Pick team, and we didn't have anything because we're like we're doing this stuff every day, all day. You guys know. <clears throat> and so Antonio was like, "Hey, should to Jonathan and me? Hey, should we show the pickles? Because I'd cut together a little trailer." And Jonathan's like, "Yeah, yeah." So Antonio like darts out of the room in the middle of the meeting, comes back in, it comes to us, and they're like, "Oh yeah," and says, well, "This is a little something we were working on." And we put the tape in, and everyone was like, "Oh my God, you had like Mike Myers, Adam Sandler, like all these top tier celebrities talking about this fake it's like band." Like Spinal Tap. Yeah, exactly. And they're talking about this fake band, and then uh, your friend Kevin Weist, uh, who is an executive at Nickelodeon at the time, came to us after the meeting and was like, "Guys, what's it going to take to finish this? This is amazing." So they they scrapped together like a few bucks for us and they gave it to uh, gave us the small little budget and we went and just shot for two days we set up like a thing to do a music video we hired someone to write our hit song and that was the very long-winded answer to your question of was I in a band yes I was in a band once called the pickles and you cannot find that on Spotify unfortunately no but you can on YouTube there are it's been broken up into three pieces you can watch it because Jeff Probst came in and hosted it for us because Jeff Probst loved coming on our show. He used to come on You Pick all the time and whenever he was in New York, he would come on the show. He called us saying, hey, I'm going to be in New York. Can I come by the show? And we were like, oh, we're dark that week. 
and he's like, ah, oh, like, oh, but you know what? Could you come in and like host this fake thing for us? And he's like, totally. So he came in, we weren't even up, and uh, he hosted, he did all the wraparounds for the, the Pickles behind the music special. And uh, he was awesome. Well, once the tribe had spoken for You Pick exactly. Live, there's a segue right there. Uh, we worked together yes. on a show called My Family's Got Guts. Yes, That's we did. how we met. The first day I met you, that same day you were on a stretcher. Do was you that the very first day we that met? That was the first day. Uh, Do you remember that? Can you kind of explain that story? Yeah, I remember. I destroyed my ankle. I've never been the same, same since. Thanks for bringing it up, Adam. This is a great story. <laughs> so, what, do you, what, do you got, what do you got for an encore? <laughs> <laughs> Good lord. Uh, no, so, it's so, a, it's yeah, a, so we were working on my family's story. got we were working on my family's got guts and we were in a gymnastics gymnasium. I was running the shoot and I was standing on a stack of gym mats about that high and I was giving my host an eye line and I said, Okay, let's go again. And I went to get off those gym mats. I should have jumped down two feet and I instead I stepped as if I'm stepping off a curb. Well you can't do that when you have a stack of gym mats that high. It's a little little tip, pro tip for all you playing along at home. Uh, and I landed sideways on my ankle and it completely destroyed my ankle. Ended up having to have surgery. I passed out cold. If we really want to get into it, okay. It was, it was very I scary. I passed out cold. I, I, I rolled over, I looked, it, my ankle was the size of a grapefruit, instantly. And the medic came over and the cameraman came over and they picked me up and I, was, I had arms around each of them and I looked straight in my cameraman's eyes and went, I'm gonna pass out now. And he goes, I got you. And I just, and just laid me out on the floor. And then I woke up and they were like, uh, all right, well, we're gonna get you into an ambulance. Now here's, I've always wanted to ride in an ambulance so I got to live that dream. So, but yeah. You know, I'll still beat you in a foot race if you want to try. Let's do it. I'll, I'm, just, I'm not. I'm just kidding. Because we, we don't want to exit just yet. Oh, see that? Seamless. <laughs> Seamless. Uh, where is this from? This is the exit sign that hung over the brain drain in Brain Search. Uh, 120 episodes of Brain Search. Awesome show. So much fun to host. It was a great time. And one of the guests, I, I loved there was a there was a season, there was a week where I remember Candace Cameron was on mm -hmm. uh, and you had Larry King. Yeah, we did have Larry King. The show, but Larry didn't go down the brain drain. No. See when Larry when I was told Larry King was on the show, it was like, this is either gonna be the best idea ever or the worst idea ever. Uh, and it ended up being great. It was really awesome. Uh, but it was one of those things that was like, oh, do we send him down the brain drain? They're like, do we want to be the guy, like the show that broke Larry King's hip? Um, he ended up not wanting to go down the brain drain anyway, which was fine. He's, his son went down. It was a family episode of brain, family brain surge. Um, but yeah, so when we were uh, getting ready, I don't know if you remember in round one where everyone started, there was, everyone had their podium and it was a two-tiered thing. So he was on the first tier. Behind him was Anthony Anderson and his son. And as we were getting into place, like I was standing there and Larry King is coming, coming in and he like loses his step and he starts going down. I mean, like he is going down and Anthony Anderson cat like reflexes, like steps out from behind his podium, catches Larry King, props him back up and nobody saw it but me. And Anthony Anderson and I just like, like locked eyes and he goes, yeah. You don't want that lawsuit. <laughs> it just was like it was just it was like another day for Larry King. He was just like, oh yeah, like I lose my step all the time, and people catch me all the time. It was such a crazy uh, thing. What lot did you tape Brain Surge on? Brain Surge, we did. Uh, it's now currently Hollywood Center Studios, but it was Sunset Las Palmas. At That's the time. where we're taping yeah. our show. Twenty-five oh. words or less, please watch. Uh, do you remember what stage number you were in? We're in stage one, the I Love Lucy stage. No, we weren't that. That was too small for us. We were in. We shot in two different stages. Nine uh, is the biggest one. Nine, we were in nine for one season. This is riveting stuff, by the way. F fans of More the things that will not make fans, the cut. Fans of the show <laughs> love hearing about stages that they've never been in. Uh, yeah, I can't remember. It was two stages. It was like nine and then the one that's like all the way, maybe three. I don't know. I can't remember. So you, you had two sort of catchphrases on Brain Surge, and I want to know where it came from. And the first one, I'm going to do my impression. Oh, God, here we go. Boom! I, you know, I, th I think that was just one of those things that was in the moment. That was not a conscious decision. That was uh, just, 
I get, I'm not an actor. I'm, I do a really good imitation of myself and that's pretty much as good as it gets. So it was just kind of in the moment, I did it. That was more figured out though, I think. I think they were both. Really? I think you did. did well, I have, is our, that editors, <laughs> our editors are gonna show right now all the times you said boom. Ready, go. Telling me I said it that much across two, two series, that's almost 300 you say, episodes. You didn't say episodes. it on 101 Ways to Leave a Game Show. Oh, that's good. That's good. Uh, thanks for watching Mayfield, New York. Thanks for watching Mayfield, New York. Woo! Mayfield, New York is where I grew up, uh, and it was one of those things I just. Mayfield is a very small town in upstate New York. Uh, my graduate public high school only school in town. It wasn't like half the students were here. Half, it was small, like a graduating high school class of fifty. So it's a small town. Doesn't get a lot of love, and uh, you know, I'm proud to have grown up, grown up there. And I thought, like, hey, a little, a little shout out to the hometown. And it was uh, that was my little thing. And nobody ever said to you, hey Jeff, that thing you're doing, don't do that. No, I think I talked with the producers beforehand too, saying like, hey, do you guys mind if after I do, you know, the scripted stuff of, hey, tune in next time when we go head to head to head to head to head on another episode of Brain Search, do you mind if I toss that in? And they were like, no, go for it. So I did it. I think it, they would have told me if they didn't want it. I love that. Uh, during Brain Surge, and not many people get to say they've done this, mm -hmm. uh, Dick Clark, Bill Cullen, Bob Eubanks, and you, mm -hmm. hosted two game shows at the exact same time. You did Brain Surge and 101 Ways to Leave a Game Show. Sure. And this is a big talk about the going from Nickelodeon to ABC, a major, major primetime show from the same producers as Wipeout, which was huge at the time. Yeah, that was big. Uh, so we finished season three of Brain Surge, and then six days later, I was shooting 101 Ways to Leave a Game Show. And that was awesome. And uh, one of the things, this, I don't know if I've really shared this that much, um, People always ask me like, hey, did you, you know, when you're hosting, do you ever get nervous? And my thing was, I don't know, because like I said, I was, I'm not an actor, I do me. And that was always my thing, like just, just be who you are, just trust who you are, don't overthink things. I have a tendency to overthink things. So anyway, I uh, you know, was like, all right, making that jump from you know, cable, kids TV, half hour to major, you know, major network, prime time, hour long format, huge budgets. And I remember the day one we were shooting right up the road here and I'm standing on the edge of a lake. There's a jet boat out there that goes 120 miles an hour. There's a monster truck parked over there. We're going to crush a car. And there's two helicopters getting one. One helicopter is shooting the helicopter. That's little, getting a little footage. bit bigger of a budget than the little, pick, than the pick boy. A little bit bigger. Of a budget. Yeah. I mean, you know, pick boy. I was running around in glorified pajamas. We're looking at, you know, millions of dollars being spent on each episode. And I'm standing there, and, and, and as you mentioned, it was done by the same guys who did Fear Factor and Wipeout. And they're, they're like a fraternity. They've all been working together for years. And they are super awesome. Like, they totally invited me in. I was one of the guys instantly. But I was like, they all know each other. They, you know, they're just a well-oiled machine. And I was standing there. I'm like, oh, my gosh. And I got that moment. It was the first, time, the first and only time I've ever gotten nervous on camera, that in, in this interview. Um, <laughs> and it was just one of those things that was crazy because I was going, oh, my God. This is like, I'm going to get figured out. Like, I'm totally out of my league. They're gonna, they're gonna realize I've been faking this entire time. I, I'm not a host. I never was a host. I was a producer who- You were psyching yourself. Through a series of accidents, ended up as a game show host. I was like, I'm a total fraud. And I was like, this is the moment where I'm gonna get figured out on the biggest stage of all. And I started getting a little, whew. And Matt Kunitz is the executive producer and you know, he's executive producer extraordinaire. He comes, he comes walking down the dock and he comes up to me and he goes, can I swear on this show? Can I swear? No. You can do whatever you okay. want. He comes over and he like puts his hand on my show and he goes, hey, don't f this up. I got a lot riding on this. And he just like walks away and I was like, oh my God. And it was, I mean, he said it like half kidding, but like there's always an element of seriousness and everything. So I was like, oh man. And as he's walking away, the stage manager's literally going five, four, three. And I was like, oh, and as soon as, but as, soon as they pointed to me, it was like, oh, right. You're just a you. I, I got this show because of me. That's what they want. They want me. So that's what I did. And it was I, that was the only moment there was a brief hesitation of like, oh. And then I was like, oh wait, just do, do your thing. And it was fine. I, once we started rolling, it was great. Helicopters flying over, it was buzzing you, and boats flying all over, crushing cars. It was crazy. It was so much fun. Oh yeah. And I want to show this once again because very shortly after yeah. you're doing 
Brain Surge. You're doing 101 Ways to Leave a Game Show, and then you get a reboot. And this was a reboot before reboots right. were cool. Did you, <laughs> did you talk to Summer Sanders before you became the host of Figure It Out? Uh, I didn't get to talk to her. I did. I, you know, I don't know if I've ever uh, mentioned this. There's your... Yeah. Oh, right here. It says, Figure It Out, 2012, 70 episodes. That's how I got through that. So interestingly enough, Figure It Out, like you said, it was a reboot. That's the first time I ever hosted a show where there was an existing property. 101 Ways, Brain Surge. It was always, this is my, my playground, my rules. And I could take that ownership. With Figure It Out, it was one of those things like, nope. This is a pre-existing property. There's an established thing here. And so my approach there was, yes, yeah, still bring my, my brand. Love when people say you have a brand. I don't even know what it means, but yeah. To bring my sort of energy, my playfulness to it. But I also have to you know, pay tribute to, there's an established thing here. And that, I'll say, Figure It Out was the hardest show for me to host. And not because of the content. Um, because of that, because there was an expectation of this is what the show is, this is what the show was. It was very faithful to the original. Thank you. And it was, but you know, it was, no, don't do it that way. Don't say it that way. And it was like very hard for me to kind of put myself in, into that. However, I will say my favorite moment of hosting anything out of everything I ever did came from Figure It Out. And what was that moment? Uh, when we had this little kid named Brennan who was a circus performer and uh, he had figured out the secret slime action. If that word was said, if they guessed that word, he would get slimed. And he had figured it out in a split second that he was about to get slimed. And as they pulled the trigger to slime him, he spun off his chair and dodged it and darted off. Oh, oh it's up. And I was like, what just happened? And because none of this was planned. And that was a big thing. I was always told like, with figure, like, nope, do it this way. Nope, we don't have time for that. Nope, get to this. So I was just like, and I was like, no way. Like, and so this is where it became my playground, my rules. I was just like, no. And I jumped off the stage and he started doing like the, like he didn't know what to do. And he darted off behind, back, stage. Run, I'm like, I got the camera guy running behind me, and I grabbed him, and I walked over to the seat. I put him on the seat, I held him there, I looked over at the slime guy, I was like, go for it. And he just, boom, and just like opened the heavens on this kid. It was just, and we both got hammered. It was like my favorite moment, like not just figured out out of everything I've ever hosted in my entire life, that moment, because it was so, just in the moment, it was so spontaneous, it was just like this crazy thing that it all came together and afterwards I was just like if you guys cut that from the show I swear to god <laughs> please don't cut that from the show and they did a great job they cut it down and made it work and it, it's in the show it was awesome <laughs>
this guy does for Richard Malmus, our entire team. I'm Adam Wurzel. Jeff Sutphin, over to you. Thanks for watching, guys. It's been awesome. Let me talk about myself. Thanks for watching Mayfield, New York. And Adam, I'm going to need that cake.